She was so excited, and they're desperate for another. Oh, really? Oh, really? They're on you? On me, but also like telling strangers. <laughs> I mean, I'm not breaking any sort of news here. They... We're so grateful you shared the exclusive with Mom Brave. <laughs> Today's show. That's going to be our teaser, by the way. Yes, I'm not. There's no news being broken, but I will say, if you ask their teachers, they think I'm pregnant and strangers at you know so the coffee funny. shop. Mila just knew this was going to be amazing to have a sister to mm-hmm. get a baby sissy. Being a mom is the toughest job there is, and it doesn't come with instructions. So it's okay if you don't have all the answers. We'll figure it out together. This is Mom Brain with Alaria Baldwin and Daphne Oz. I'm Jenna Bush Hager. I'm the mom of two little girls, Mila, who's five, and Poppy Louise, who's three. I work at the Today Show, um, and life is pretty chaotic. I want to go back to the whole corset conversation. I was given some corsets after Carmen was born, and I didn't really know what to do with them and maybe they weren't really great corsets because they had like these like long it was just like this like band yeah it had ribs in it and i remember putting it on and then it would like dig into my ribs and it would dig into my maybe and maybe it's just supposed to be uncomfortable but also maybe you had ribs for it to dig into like (laughs) i had had padding that it could help support do you know what i mean so much mush i had some mush that needed to be i i I had mush i had mush too there's this there's this photo that i really regret do you ever have like those photos that are just out there yeah you're just like i really wish that either i have about a handful of like five solid ones that are just like they will they will win any of your bad photos i don't think so I guarantee you, and I'm going to tell you about them because you're just going to be horrified. And and then, I, then of course, then people are going to Google them. And then I am, like, so stupid for bringing this up. Um, but why not? It's mom brain. Um, so I tried Spanx one time because they told me right after Carmen was born. And I just, like, didn't have maternity clothes when I was pregnant with Carmen, really. I just continued to wear yeah. my yoga clothes. Big mistake because I thought I was being so frugal. I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. have to buy more clothes. And then I just stretched them out. Oh, I know. So, so then, you then had to buy, I had to buy yoga new clothes anyway. anyway. So that was like mistake. And you get tired of what you wear when you're mm-hmm. pregnant. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, yes. And so I then tried these spinks that were like shorts and then went up like halfway up the belly. And I put them on and then I put yoga pants over it. Big mistake. And a tight t-shirt over it. And then I went out. And of course, there's paparazzi because it was right after the baby was born. And you can see this line. <sighs> and, and, and then just like my like fat coming out from the bottom and then my fat I coming out from the top. I cannot imagine that. I'm going to show it to you. I'm, I am going to show it to you. It's bad. It's really bad. And then some of my other ones were like Alec picking me up uh, while I was pregnant in front of like 200 The thing uh, is, the p- fact that he could pick you up. I was very, well. It was it wasn't a successful pickup. <laughs> then let the bottom of my dress go. So you're oh, seeing gosh. my butt. I'm wearing a thong. <laughs> I'm seven and a half months pregnant in can. It was horrible. Uh, and then I'm making this face. Because you're sort of thinking I'm like, like, oh, wait, what's God, I'm wearing a here? T-length dress. It was so bad. It oh. was so bad. And then they put it on the front page of the paper the next oh, day. No, well, it was bad. I'm wouldn't telling you, you I win. I win page? with the worst. I win with the worst photo ever. But yeah, anyway, my husband stopped best. trying to pick me up. <laughs> I mean, by the way, two hundred pregnant, mark. <laughs> pregnant or not pregnant, and my husband's tall; he's six four. But there's not much picking up no. going on. No. <laughs> going back to the corset thing, so was I just wearing it wrong, or was the wrong corset? I definitely. I mean, I don't think they're comfortable. I don't think they're meant to be comfortable. But the idea being. You don't have a lot of stomach strength left after you give birth. And I think it's just supposed to help you, especially because I had a lot of back pain. It was like really yeah. helpful to me to not let it all hang out, you know. And look, there's something to be said for um, it's called relaxin, this like hormone yep. that's through your body the whole, you know, the, I think it's up to six months after you give mm-hmm. birth. And it is. It's helping your muscles go back, your body go back, re- reestablish that old shape, it, sort of. I just liked the impression that I got when I put it under clothes that like there was a I waist know. there again. <laughs> I like it's weird. I, I didn't wear it every day at all and in fact I probably wore it like a dozen times but I did like the way it it felt I mean I I had a two c-section so like there was something about it felt like armor you know like if somebody would like run into me I don't think that would have felt great what was it like the second time because your older daughter was what a year a year and a half when you had your second she was older she was two she was two years a little uh, two years and some change but she's right at the height where when she runs into your stomach it's like hitting your scar I know it's weird like (laughs) 
you just d- go with it, yeah. you know, or like kick your stomach probably oh, when it felt good. But yes. I think it's like for those little people, they can they can do whatever they want. You know, they don't mean to hurt. Um, no. And she was gentle. I mean, she she was really sweet about her baby mm-hmm. sister. and She was excited about her? Oh, she, my gosh. How would you break the news to her and how would you talk about she it? She was her? so excited and they're desperate for another. Oh, really? Oh, really? They're on you? Desperate. On me, but also like telling strangers. <laughs> Um, that mommy's I, ready. Yeah, and they're like, no, mommy's bringing home a baby boy to put in my crib. Aww. And I'm, I mean, I'm not that I'm not breaking any sort of news here. No. Um, but they, we're so grateful you shared the exclusive <laughs> with mom. <laughs> right. Today's show. That's going to be our teaser, by the way. Yes, I'm not. There's no news being broken. But I will say, if you ask their teachers, they think I'm pregnant, and strangers at you know so the coffee funny. shop. Um, but no, my mom actually had the best idea, which was to send a picture of Barbara and me. I have a twin sister. So us, when we were toddlers, like Mila's age, and to show the power of sisterhood yes. and how much we loved each other. And in this particular picture, I'm squeezing her so tight. You can see like red marks oh, on her neck. Um, and I think so I think Mila just knew that, that this was going to be amazing to have a sister to mm-hmm. get a baby sissy. Um, and then the other things we did is we put – so she was really thrilled. Um, we put a picture of Mila on the little bassinet at the hospital. And and so – and the baby, Poppy, was in the nursery. So Mila went and picked out her sister, and she knew it was hers because her picture was there. Yeah. But – and then it didn't feel like, you know, this person was coming to invade our family. But really this was this was somebody that was coming to, to complete it and – make it feel right. And I think sisterhood is like, I I kind of thought I was going to have a wolf pack of boys because I was a little bit of a tomboy and had a lot of guy friends in high school. But having these girls, these sisters who love each other is like the best gift in the world. I just can't even explain how much I love it. It's one thing that you've got to it, experience. And it's one thing that I keep on trying to yes. make another girl. So I have a girl <laughs> and then I have three boys. And she says to me all the time, she's like, Mommy, are you pregnant with my little sister? And, and like, it just no, doesn't work that way it necessarily. It doesn't work that way. And it's and it's a little heartbreaking because she says to me, I mean, I love my boys and I never yeah. wish that they, they weren't here and they weren't exactly how they are. But, you know, it's she says to me, Mommy, you only like boys because you only Aww. bring home boys. And I'm like, You're no. like, I'm not like, choosing you have no that. Idea. I've tried to make a girl three well, times. Well, did you do that? Yeah, like, have you ever done the like day counting and the I did the day counting. No, oh, so you wanted for two a girls. boy. For a book. Oh, and it so didn't, it work. didn't work. And it didn't. Oh, well, same. I wasn't getting pregnant. And so then I just was like, I'm so tired of like the day counting and the. You know, I think I actually really think that um, the pressure of that yeah. and the like the calculation of it and yes. the like we have to hit it now so that we get the right time. I really believe your body's like, nope, going to yeah. shut that sh- ship right down. Exactly. And also it's like there's nothing appealing about being like, having right, sex here's for, the time for the, we for have the to calendar. Go. You know, <laughs> no. it's like we already have a little child like and two jobs. <laughs> you know, right. We How do you find the, the perfect time? <laughs> so we, we blew that off. But I, and I will say like I do think she's going to be the sister of boys and, and that is also this beautiful gift. So it's like whatever you have I think is what's meant to be. Um, and like that sounds silly, but it becomes your story. Yeah, and so then it is what's meant to exactly. be. Exactly, or you um, just keep going till you, you get them. Like my going. parents, is that your plan? They had three girls Maybe. till they got the boy. They just had to keep going and going and Which going. Which is like, by the way, they could have had six girls, and then you know. <laughs> by the way, so my many. my nanny is one of twelve girls. I'm oh sorry, gosh. what? Yeah, one of twelve girls, no boys. Are you kidding me? Yep, that's awesome. Yep. I kind of love awesome. that. So but every is... single day, I have a reminder of what could could be. happen. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, we have, well, you know what? If people tell me lots of different things. They say that one day she's going to love that it's just the two of us. And you know what? If it if it happens, great. And if it doesn't happen, yeah. that's, fine. that's fine, too. I mean, we obviously didn't. The only pl- pregnancy that I planned was number four. Because I was like, all right, great. I had my girl. I had a boy. I had another boy. Obviously, it's time it's gonna to have be a, girl a girl again. Yeah. Obviously. So I was like, let's try. Get pregnant immediately. Find out it's a boy. When they called me because I did the blood test, yeah. I literally just hung up the phone. Were you disappointed? I was. I was. And I have to say that I think that's it was something I was very embarrassed about. Yeah. Um, I cried. I I hung I I my my friend, uh, I call her my friend now because I'm a frequent frequent <laughs> customer there. So Lisa called me and she's like, Ilaria. And I said, Yeah. And she said, It's a boy. And I said, Okay. And I hung up the phone. 
And then I look at Alec and I was like frustrated with him in the moment about something. And I was like, I know what it is right now. And I was going to make you a special cake to tell you. And I'm not going to make this special cake anymore. And I'm like, of course, you're like super, super, super like yeah. hormonal and stuff like that. And then I told him. And then I spent the entire night, couldn't sleep, looking up grief pages which there actually are about not being able really? to get the gender yeah it's absolutely fascinating and then my friend um maria jacobs i don't know if you know maria yeah, jacobs so she said to me she's like ilari it's fine you just haven't met him yet mm. once you meet him he's gonna be your baby and you know what she was absolutely right and then i just came to terms with you know what if this is something that i feel that strongly about i will just have another one yeah totally and then i will have another one another one and i love romeo and i would never want him to be a girl no and so and, it, and also it, but i do think there's something wise and knowing that you would maybe feel that way that you wanted a girl yeah. and so finding out before the baby was yes. born because with mila she, mila was a surprise although my mom found out my mom we let my mom um, find out from the doctor. There's and a little piece of paper. She well, this was at the very end of the okay. pregnancy, and she came <laughs> and she helped me, you know, set up the nursery like all day, and like you know was like surprising me with stuff and just really kind, um, organizing things. She's a great organizer, and so we went to the doctor, and I, she didn't think she was going to be able to be at the birth because my dad's presidential library was opening on my due date. Oh my goodness. Um, Mila came a month early, so I was able to go and my mom was able to come. But I was like, okay, well, since she can't be here, let's go ahead and let the doctor tell her. And Henry was like, do I have a say in this? I'm like, no. <laughs> um, so they wrote on a little piece of paper, it's a girl. And then I, you know, I found out a couple of weeks later when she came early. But, and I do think my water broke in my baby shower. Yeah. Which was traumatic. Oh my gosh! I and mean, believe me, there was crying because pe there were pregnant people that were like, <laughs> "This is gosh. horrifying." The and, first pregnant horror film. And Mila was breech. <laughs> oh gosh! So it was like a real, like com a you know, lot. a real water breaking like comedy. And I was crying, and then I was like laughing and crying. But it was, and there was one man in the room, the caterer, who just like threw the paper towels at us and like left. He was like, "I'm out. <laughs> <He laughed>. Done." <laughs> Uh, my my description. Yep. <laughs> but I do, everybody thought Mila was a boy and we were going around and when I was opening the present, somebody would like name the boy. Everybody was boy, boy, boy. And I kind of feel like Mila was like, I am a girl, you know, <laughs> here I come. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but I think until my mom found out, but with Poppy, I wanted a boy. I mean, I, I don't know why I just did. And so I found out because I thought like, I didn't want my first moment of yes. meeting this incredible human being to feel disappointing in any way. Right. Right. And I feel like if you have a preference, it's good to go ahead and figure it out right. and then have those months to just like get over what your preconceived notion was, you yes. know? Yes. Because it's only about expectations. Exactly. It's just, it's this silly planning thing. And I think that also when you're pregnant, because you have that nesting and you have this just very weird... Yeah energy uppity mm -hmm. energy and and it's like well this has to be this way and it has to be very specific yeah and i think because of that you can get into the danger of like well it's going to be like this and this and this and this exactly and then you're like, whoa it's not yeah and and also like how cool that we don't have control over the, you know i mean exactly. i think it's pretty but i also think it's funny how you grow up and wherever it happened along the way thinking of yourself as a mother of like yes. a, a wolf pack of boys or uh, same for me i thought for sure because my parents had had so many girls and I felt like I was the, you know, live-in yeah. second mother for all these <laughs> children all the time, I really felt for certain that my destiny was going to be all all boys. Yeah. And it was so funny when when we had Philo first and it, and then we had, um, and then we had John after her and then a girl again. It became so clear. It was actually having Nika, our third, where I was like, gosh, it was actually really important for me for Philo to have a sister because that was actually yeah. the seminal relationship well, exactly. for us, you know? Um, but now I feel like it's really important for John to have a brother. Oh, so I just are don't you, do you think you're going to have like 27 children? Both of y'all are going to have 27 together. children. <laughs> I, there's, a, there's something weird in, in this like water in here. So just, you know, drink or don't drink. Why? Partake or don't partake. Have babies. Other people have many babies. <laughs> oh, okay. So a many, lot of, a lot of kids. many babies. I think, I think I have one more pregnancy in me. You never know. I, I feel just like... Just one, Daphne? I don't know. I say that just now. Just one. That's because four children. Because <laughs> I'm tired. Let me tell you something. One to two was hard. Two to three, not so bad. Are you sure? Three to, I'm so sure. Yeah. A three to four was like nothing. Do you think ever about happened. a third? Yes. Yeah. Three, three is great. But I think about a third, but I also, and I do not know, I mean, we live in New York City. We both work. Like we have to think about practically. Totally. I think if we lived in Texas, which 
I would have, you know, yeah. not that it's e- any easier, but like you can have more space. Yeah, like, no, it's goldfish growing into a yeah. bowl. It's yeah. like you s- expand into your space. I just think about the practical Although stuff. Although they're pretty little for a while. So my two closest, so Rafa and Leo, number two, number three, they share a room yeah. together. Well, and I and I'm always gonna put share Romeo, a room. I'm going to put Romeo in the room with them, too. I already put his name sign on the, on the door. That he is... sleeps with me right now. But once he goes to one, I'm putting him in the boys' room. We're going to close the door. We're going to pad everything. And we're just going to, like, <laughs> pray. Let him do get out. Just get it together. No, in but there, I shared a room with my sister. And even now, we just went on a book tour. And they were like, okay, here are your two room keys. And we were like, two room keys? <laughs> yes. We're very happy sleeping one together. King bed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, and I think it creates this bond between mm-hmm. siblings. I mean, that's, you're right. Like, you can figure it out. I just, I get worried about the logistics. Is the twin thing real? Do you guys have, like, weird telepathic moments? Yes. And, really? Yes and no. But, I mean, yeah, I like, she's my very closest friend. And there's something about having somebody that goes through the same exact stage of life with you at the same time. Yeah. Being a twin, I would love to have twins. I mean, even though that would be horrifying. That's what I, if I had to go through like an invasive path to get pregnant, I for sure was doing twin boys. Right. <laughs> like, that's oh, what I, it would be, I know, and I kind of prayed like to have two girls and then twin boys, yes. even though when they turned 16, I would Perfect. probably have a heart attack. But, <laughs> um, I think we're just so, so close because, you know, if somebody's older or younger, then there might be like this judgment, like, oh, the little brother thinks this way about this circumstance. But we were going through all of these kind of awkward odd times mm-hmm. at the exact same stage of life. Mm-hmm. So we're, our point of reference is just so, so similar. And she's my best friend. Do you guys handle things differently, though? Like, do you handle stress differently? Yes. Do you handle, really? And actually, due to a lot of therapy, we realize... We love therapy around here. <laughs> we're, we're big we realize <laughs> that we're, that that's in relation to each other, that, you know, she takes things in, and I'm a little bit more um, explosive, it sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> very dramatic but I'm a little bit more forward yeah forward and she takes things in and that's sort of how we are dynamic mm. and that maybe that's the reason why we are who we are today it's very interesting yeah. and we were both working on the negatives of those things did you, did you read that book the five love languages yes I wonder if that happens with siblings too that like these are permanent relationships in your life. If you guys haven't read um, Frank Bruni, who's a writer for the uh, New York Times, mm-hmm. he wrote this beautiful thing about the gift of siblings. And it actually is the reason why Barbara and I wrote Sisters First, a book we wrote together about a year ago, because we feel like, you know, you spend as much time with them as you do your parents, if not yeah. maybe more, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that this gift is this, uh, it should be a gift. And really, I think that people, that little kids love each other from the moment of birth, and it's just adults who can mess that up. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to not compare your children. I mean, Barbara and I, Barbara went to Yale. I went to the University of Texas. She applied to like 77 Ivy League schools, if there are that many, <laughs> um, and got into every single one. I did not apply to one. Um, um, and I think had we been compared, things could have gone south really fast. But our parents really embraced these different yeah, sides of us. Side, yeah. And it was so it was so lucky because we loved each other. We didn't – there was no competition. And I think that's really important mm-hmm. because I do think kids love each other. That's the natural instinct is love. Yeah. And then the only reason why something gets in the way of that is adults or, or life. Um, but anyway, read – Frank Bruni's article because it really will make you think about your siblings and maybe your kids and their yeah definitely and how you nurture differences and yeah. and also give the fabric of the family a very consistent look too like mm-hmm. I think I think that's something if I'm remembering the article correctly I think that was something that really stuck out, stuck out to me was like only your siblings will know how crazy your parents totally. were and like how different and or like remember these silly remember like, these silly moments yeah. that were just so like I remember there have been so many weird wait things you're that one happened. of four I'm one of four okay so you're definitely gonna have another baby I, <laughs> <laughs> well I always joked I wanted seven now I'm just like slowing down yeah. like the, the train is let working me tell you something um, if you decide to have another one when she decides when you decide to have another one once uh, you hit the number four, yeah. I think that there's something about you. You're like, eh, okay, eh, I can have another one. 
Once your body heals and Although you can maybe, do that weird maybe forgetting thing. Four feels like a nice round a nice number. number. That's what people said four to me. Four, you but can then, still drive but, a normal car. Like, I'm worried about the sprinter van yeah. that is coming in my future. Exactly. Yeah. We've already looked at one. Oh my gosh. Got, Who's going to drive How big that? is it? Me. I all drive everywhere. How big? It's like a big, big van. Like, yes. Like a bus. <laughs> I actually was kind of wishing we had a mini. I had a minivan growing mm-hmm. up with like the a wood great, on the of course. baby blue with wood yes. paneled. Yes. And I'm like, I want a minivan. I don't want like a huge suburban. Yeah. If I have another child, I want a minivan. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I don't know. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of embrace. I've started wearing a backpack again because I need my hands to be free. Oh, I thought you were going to say a fanny pack. I do wear one of those. I mean, too. Backpacks, <laughs> backpacks and fanny packs are very They're chic. So chic they are again. Very chic. They're so chic again, and I feel like the minivan could become chic again. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. no, okay. no. Let's bring no. back the minivan. We if had a Volvo station one. wagon. No, I love. A st- I actually, <laughs> you guys did. I want a station wagon too. But I like really want like an old. <laughs> Woody station yes. wagon. Okay, so here's how we're gonna share this old like memory. I'm gonna have the farm and the like churn my own butter moment, and you will drive the kids in the station yes. wagon. Wait, where are you? Is that what your dream is? Uh, yeah. I where? Think, you know, uh, I think probably upstate New York. I think somewhere sort of still close to civilization, but and you live know. there, live there permanently, yeah, or that I kind of love. Or you know, I went to school in New Jersey. I feel like there's a part of me that feels like a big New Jersey farm could be amazing, and I, I need a taste of the city. Like it was interesting hearing you talk about you and Barbara and you know take like I feel like I feed off energy until it exhausts oh, me yeah. and I like can take the city for a couple days and I just need to get the hell out of yeah. Dodge and I really feel I had this really interesting reading yesterday by an astrologer oh <laughs> send sorry, me the information I'm in, like, a deep weird state right no, now I like that um, but it was fascinating because he was like giving me my thing and I'm an Aquarius but I have like a Gemini rising and a Gemini moon and I really crave grounding I really mm-hmm. crave real things and that's why probably I went into food he's like one of the best ways you can feed the real is with good food yeah. and, and, and wellness but also just being outside being in nature growing things feeling like you are contributing to something real that way um so anyway yeah i see the farm in my future but i just don't see the mini it's so the funny the because i wagon. i feel that too i mean i feel and i think probably because i've lived in the city now for nearly 10 years yeah. and and i grew up in such a different way that i like crave being outside mm-hmm. and like and i feel like i'm like taking my shoes off in my house and trying to ground in the like <laughs> cement of new york city and like, mila's like what are you doing but i've been feeling that way recently mm-hmm. like how important it is to root and i do think that has something to do with having kids and i always say to henry i mean our, our life here is not done yet but if it is done i want the completely different chapter completely. i want to like move to virginia and like have a farm or move to leapers fork tennessee like i want a totally different and i see that for our family yeah like i see something that's not even close to new york city as a second chapter because i kind of think why not like teach your kids that there's beauty in everything and Completely. it doesn't have to be, you know, fancy and they, New they York. just get so cooped up as well. I mean, I always, it always really hits me this time of year with the kids and, and you know, because we're, you know, especially on really cold days. Did you either of y'all grow up in the city? I always grew up in a city. Yeah. And in, so I crave city. Yeah. Um, that being said, you know, we have, we have a home out in Amagansett yeah. and it's the only time that I've ever really spent time in, as I call it, the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never stayed at that home alone because I'm the kind of person where I hear well sirens. No, I, I don't. I get very nervous. I hear sirens. I hear screaming. And, you feel at and home. I'm like, great. If something happens to me, somebody will hear me. It'll be great. I go out there and you're, you're here like, chirp, chirp. Woo, woo, all these different things. <laughs> like the axe man is coming. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so anytime, like you know, before obviously I'm never alone now because I have a million children. But anytime, like Alec would be traveling and I wouldn't be going with him, I would like make one of my friends come. And not only would they stay in the house with me, they would have stay to sleep in, in my bed with yeah. me. And I'd be like, okay, we're just leaving a. All the lights on in the house. <laughs> Something Alara has done that actually I'm really like so. I think it's such a good thing. Her friends have become aunts and uncles to her kids. Mm-hmm. I feel like she has a lot of like really close gay friends mm-hmm. also. So her like gay uncles. Like, friends with any straight men. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, right? So the kids have all these like fab uncles and and, and, a, and a few women in there I, too. By the way, um, it is so much easier. We just came, we were upstate this weekend with some friends and Savannah who I work with and Siri who I work with and we it's so much easier yesterday we were texting and we were like miss you i mean even though i see Savannah every day and i'm <laughs> going to work out with her after this but raise like being in a house with all these kids and like all these parents 
I mean, some things happened. Like, my husband was like, while you were getting a massage, like, we did, like, yoga and got a massage. Poppy ate a laxative. Oh, Oh, no. That's fun. It turned (laughs) really ugly really fast. It was a children's laxative, but it looked like a chocolate. I'm not sure where she found it or why. Uh, It was scary, but but it was also, you know— Luckily, we were with people with a lot of children, so they understood the horror of a, ch- a three-year-old eating a cho- oh. chocolate laxative. Oh, wow. um, I know it <laughs> was not great, but the point is, is that there is so there's something so wonderful about finding this group of people, whoever they are, who like can kind of help. Like it's the village, and you know. Exactly. Put humor in it too, and be in it. Oh, with totally. You because and just, like, if you're at home, experience. and that, ha- I mean, oh, I. <laughs> Recently, I felt really like down on myself just because I've like had a little bit of a, a, a difficult year and I've been working so much and traveling that like I've lost some of the humor, you know, and yeah. things that my kids used to do that I used to laugh or would joke along with them. And I think we go into stages and I've been it's dealing cycles. with it and cycles and I think it's normal, like, yeah. you know, but th- that would have been much more stressful alone. Whereas with them, it was like, oh, this is hilarious. You know, I'm picturing like the bridesmaid scene for you, but like the child. <laughs> All I can tell you is that we were finally asleep at like after eating tons and having like a fun dinner yeah. and somebody came into our room with a with a sticky situation. Oh, no. I know. Oh, the poor babe. But I think so, it's important that you're, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I think it's important that your kids see you deal with emotions. Yeah. And, and that. My therapist says the same but, thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, humans have those. Yeah. And, and much worse that they feel like that's a bad thing or that they not have any way of coping with them or any way to engage 100%. with them. 100%. I just think for whatever reason, I was not, I felt like a natural mom because I was a teacher. I love babies. Like I didn't ever read, and this may be cocky almost, but I didn't read parenting books. I felt like I have this and it felt so natural to me. And then I think when life gets a little bit difficult, you really have to reassess like how you, you, first of all, you have to reassess your patient level and and just like you and and take deep breaths and feel. And so, and of course, like, you know, when your kids are going through different stages, there's going to be different challenges. My kids were great sleepers. And all of a sudden, like I have in my car here, a a stoplight because Poppy's been getting out of her crib and whatever it is. Like, and instead of, I think it's okay to be like, wait, I don't totally have this. And like the world isn't going to end, you know? I find that all go through phases. And I, and it was, it's interesting that you're talking about this now because I feel like it was when I had two kids that I you started to that feel way. this way. And I, again, it was at the beginning. It was like, I'm the best parent yes. in the world. I don't know why anyone has problems with this. Exactly. This is great. Just speak to them. And then they go through a difficult phase. And then you go out there and then you talk and you talk to your girlfriends. Yes. You talk to your therapist. Exactly. You re- that's when the books come out. That's when totally. the podcast cast come out. I remember I was listening to a book on tape while I would go run and I would have like tears yeah. streaming down my face and it wasn't even that helpful to be honest. No. But I just needed a little bit of support and hope to get through the phase and some of it was like a little bit of like tweaks in parenting and yeah. some of it was just like Feeling the way going to be okay and mm-hmm. we're going to get through and it how and how a three year old acts. End. Yeah. Three is such a Oh, yeah. hard age. It it's is. so Because they want to push the boundaries. And of then course. you're like, wait, am I a parent? I, I, I do think, too, it's like now with – we talked about this on the show today, actually, with like social media and with all of these resources available – as opposed to probably my parents who were like, gosh, they're just three-year-olds. Let's, like, put them in the room and they'll get through it. Right. We kind of over-assess things, or at least I do. And then I, I there's too, too much judgment hard on, on myself. Right. Well, you feel like you should have a strategy for everything. I think the problem with this wealth of information that we have and all the dialogue we yeah. have. Like, your, our parents parented as part of the rest of their life. Right. I think parenting now is such a, like, a forward verb and everyone wants to do it perfectly and everyone knows everything else about everyone else's version yeah. of it. And I do, I think it's a lot of pressure. And it's also like, you're going through it for the first time. So especially with your oldest, as you as you start to experience these new phases where they are, they're asserting themselves. Yeah. They're not content to just have you sort of dictate whatever's totally. happening during the day. Also, they'll start asking you questions that for me just like totally floored me. I had no way. My, my father-in-law passed away. And like, yeah. how do you deal with death? And how oh do you gosh. deal with afterlife? And how Mila do you was heaven? with me when I was, when I found out my grandmother died, I was alone. Henry had been, was in Texas. My sister was in Texas. We were going down there for something else. And I was alone in our apartment. Our babysitter had gone home. It was just, and Poppy was asleep. And I get the phone call. 
and Mila's there. And of course, like, I'm not going to be like, go to your room. Like, yeah. she had to see, you know, my heart break a little bit. But then she was so, it was like this great gift because to see uh, her love, like, she was like uh, painting me pictures of my grandmother and then oh. would say prayers to her, which I, you know, That's as an really adult nice. who's jaded and older and forgets like how beautiful to like talk to a person that's gone you know and so kid like um but yes and how to support someone going through grief like yeah. her her response she she probably came and came and gave you a big hug and she wanted to be near <sighs> you and support you yes and it wasn't awkward about like how do i you know when you don't know what to say as an adult you just don't say anything exactly that's the worst you know you, you you people just need to feel you there and yeah. that's actually amazing i think, she I think also to see what i find i lost my grandmother two years ago and to see your children and to see youth, it puts the whole circle yeah. of life in perspective. And that's kind of, you know, the age that we all are right now. Yeah, we're going to lose people. We're I mean. going gonna to lose people. And it's our, un- scary, it's our turn to be the grown-ups. I know. And that's one of the scariest things is like, okay, now I have to explain this to my kid. And I have to let go of the people who explained it to me. That's a hundred percent. That's very right. And then and that, and by the way, that causes a little bit of not anxiety, but for me, like this pressure. Like all of a sudden, I think before I was carefree and I was mothering, and it felt great, and I wasn't so worried. But with the whole generation that we adored and that meant so much to us gone, all of a sudden you're like, wait, it's a lot of pressure. That, a, a lot of like your childhood yeah. is gone then. And, you know, it does cause pressure. I find that, you know, I'll, I'll do certain things like at, at Christmas time, I'll make her recipes mm-hmm. and we talk about her or different things that she, you know, gave gave to my daughter, you know, a, a red dress mm-hmm. that was way too big for her, fortunately, and now still fits yeah, her. So we'll, we'll try to keep it very relevant. And um, and it's interesting because, you know, I, for a while, um, I didn't I didn't speak about death with her because I was just so afraid of it. And then she kept on asking and I was like just nauseous at mm-hmm. the idea of mm-hmm. any kind of negativity coming into her awareness. But then you realize that they do have to, mm-hmm. they do have How to. How old is she? She's five. Yeah, Mila's five too. So yeah. yeah, so she's five. So she just started understanding it about like in the past year. And mm-hmm. then she has her times where she's scared. You say, mommy, I, I, I don't, I don't want to die. And you and I are going to live live forever yeah. and you know I always want to be with you and you know somebody gave gave advice to me that you have to kind of figure out what what you believe mm-hmm. and then put that into perspective mm-hmm. what happens to you after it which is really really yeah, difficult it's a big question it's a really big question um because they need some sort of mm-hmm. story to go along with it we you know go to church and and we definitely have a belief system. And I think one thing that my parents did that was really cool was never like implement any of their beliefs on us. Like mm-hmm. they never, and people think that's so weird I don't, because I come from a family where I guess you'd expect that. But whether it was political or religious or whatever, we were just really allowed to kind of find our own way. Mm-hmm. And so I want that for my girls, but it's interesting just by like going to Sunday school, you know, once a month. I mean, not right, no, I know. whenever we Life actually get there, the whenever we actually get there. Um, Mila said when my grandpa died earlier this, you know, at the end of the year, um, my husband, I I woke up to the news and I said to Henry, like, oh, my gosh, I just can't believe this is happening right before Christmas. And Mila overheard. And I and Henry, like, kind of closed the door and let me just have a moment because I like woke up to the news and I needed a second to process it. And um and Mila said to Henry, like, Daddy, of course it happened right before Christmas. Gampy needed to get to Ganny to decorate their Christmas tree. Oh. And I thought, like, what a beautiful thought. Um, and and that doesn't need to be, like, so, you know, there, it's not so religious or so specific. But, like, that's what she thinks. And I'm I'm okay with that. That comforted me. Um, but it is interesting. Like, I know. Well, how did we get this deep? By the way? We I went know. from courses. This is, this is what happens. This is what happens. happens. We're like, we exactly. Exactly. <laughs> There's no agenda. We just start we just start chatting. We've talked about a lot of how to how to adult, it feels like, and how to adult in parenting. What do you do to feel like a kid? Oh, well that I've been doing more of that this year yeah. because I mean since January, because I felt like I'd lost a little bit of that. I felt like with work and With responsibilities and with what we were just talking about, I'd become like lost my childlike manners, which I am that way. I mean, I'm like we laugh a lot and some of that had faded just because I didn't feel like it, you know, Um, but we dance 
and just we dance, we ha- have a blast. Um, I think we make funny jokes, which are like probably a little bit potty talkish, which whatever <laughs> they're funny. Um, I, and laughing at my like really listening to what my kids say. The other thing is, I'm the daughter of a librarian, so I love to read. Mm-hmm. Personally, I love to read. And right now, Mila and I are nearly done with the Junie B. Jones series. She's hilarious. She's precocious. She's sort of bad, so some of it I edit, but, like, whatever. Um, (laughs) And we laugh hysterically, and I think that that's really fun. Like, find something that you and your child can share. It's so true. Whenever I'm having a hard day, I just go and I just watch them. Yeah. Last night, Carmen, after we got the boys to bed, I let her stay up a little bit later, and she is like, Mommy, I make her do these phonics books, and she's like, Mommy, you know what? I want to write a story right now, and then my first instinct was like, I'm so tired. I know. And she's asking how to spell every single word, Mm -hmm. and I just don't know if I have the energy for that right now, and I feel like bad about myself, but I actually don't. Yeah. And then she's like, no, no, this is how my this is how my story goes and she takes out a a drawing paper and she starts to draw she was like there was a fairy princess and she had a butterfly and then she wanted to feed carrots and she gets this whole like long story (laughs) that she's just drawing oh my god and i'm like carmen where did you learn to do this? She's like, I don't know. I just do it on my own. And then she turns the page, and then da da da. And she's just she as she's talking to herself. And so I just I just stopped talking. Yeah. And I was just listening to her. And I can't even tell you exactly what the story was about. But she was so into it, and it was so magical and so innocent. Yeah. And it was just like all is well in the world. And creative right now. and creative interesting. And, and I'm like, genius child, great. <laughs> I think, and I think we do connect over laughing. I mean, with my family, that's how we we make it happy, you know. And my grandparents love to laugh. My parents love to laugh. My sister loves to laugh. So that's where we get joy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think even when you're not feeling great, it's like make like let your kids have those moments of hilarity yes. because they deserve it, you know. And I think you want them. Somebody told me this once, and I think it's so true. Like you can't control what goes on outside, like the four walls or however many walls you have in your Mm -hmm. house. I think ours is a square apartment. But, um, (laughs) you know, that's like I can't control what they're going to feel like at school or like the headlines. And I think people more than ever feel down with looking at whatever's going on and people are lonelier than ever. Your dad said that on the TV this morning. Um, I'm sure, no, but it's real. That is that is the epidemic of today. I is know. This, like we're all so quote unquote connected, connected. but, but we're nobody's so connected. Yeah. And, um, but so the point is, you can't control any of that, but you can control what happens like in these four walls mm-hmm. and the feeling that your kids have. And like it's not always going to be perfect. And but like so, why not laugh? Like why not put on music and dance around your? You know, let them jump on we the do couch it every night. Yeah, it's so we have fun. Dance parties but, every. We it's love a dance world. party, and it's mm-hmm. the easiest. And also, your kids mm-hmm. love to see you be silly. Yeah. They're like, "Mom, yeah. you're an animal," you know. <laughs> totally. or that they, and they see that I'm a terrible dancer, and that it doesn't matter. Totally. They see that, like, oh no, they think it's fantastic. They, but it's also, that you're having fun. <laughs> that you know, having fun. Um, how do you? I mean, look I, at the Today Show. You run the gamut of hard news, fun news, whatever. How do you take what you deal with at work? And filter it when you get home yeah. or just like not bring it into the house if you can't or. Um, well, I think one thing is I get to be a student. You know, I get to meet these incredible people and like the way you all do and get to ask questions about things I'm interested in. Yeah. And the, I've been there 10 years now. So there's I get the opportunity to, to read articles and dive into these different stories, which feels really empowering so that maybe I am a better mom or wife or community member, whatever mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, the negative stuff, you know, I, it's harder sometimes than, it, you know, to come home after you've had a bad day for whatever reason or read something that's really disappointed you or whatever it is. Like, But again, it's like you have this one shot. There's this one, these four walls, this little space. It's like I try to get rid of that. And maybe I need like a bath sometimes. I mean, I'm not always... Like when you said you're, they want an extra book or something, and if you're exhausted, it's hard it's to hard, like have hard. that patience. So I try to give myself space, like work out. Even though, what's the workout class you guys are going to? Well, we're doing a start. This is why I'm wearing this beautiful watch. We're doing a start today series on, um, and Savannah and I are dance moms. Oh, oh. Yeah. we we work out twice a week together anyway. But this is 
we're going to learn a dance routine. Oh, oh my this God, is I can't epic. wait to see that. <laughs> it is going to be very um, Jane Fonda 1980s. Oh, so good. She's Do the leg idol. warmers. Yes. She leg warmers. She's her. amazing. But then this, we won't look like Jane Fonda doing the dance. <laughs> That's okay. As long as you close your eyes and you feel like we'll Jane Fonda. We'll have fun. Buns then of it's steel. All is she, okay. she buns of steel? Am I crazy? No, no. that's Tammy Lee Webb. Oh, geez. wow. See? You really do I, know. <laughs> I, I am a fitness instructor because I was obsessed with fitness videos since I was a little kid. Did you ever do Suzanne Summers? Yes. What was, oh, the thigh obviously, master. Obviously, the thigh master. Yes. A- absolutely. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, yes. No, I am. I am a complete, like, Nerd Working out to, is a good way to blow off steam. It team. really is, and that's why I have them. So we have like every single night. I f- I feed them, I bathe them, I brush their teeth, I put their pajamas on, and then we have um a, like a reward system that I do yeah. of like how good they were that day, and then yeah. they get like patches and pennies and stuff like that, and then they can like. Work. Buy, they work. They work for a toy. That is no. It's fantastic. Know, it's, it's very. It's going so. It well. actually. Her children really respond to this. This idea that like you can earn a patch or you mm-hmm. can earn a penny and or that- take them away. The, oh, the, it's like a demerit, oh, it's a demerit system, demerit system also. and it's a, and it's a group pool thing. So it's not like Carmen got five patches and Rafa got seven patches. Oh, it's all patches. of them together. It's mm-hmm. like you, you were nice, great. That goes into the group patch thing, and then they get the same amount of pennies. And then once they get a hundred, they put them in their little piggy bank. And then once they get a hundred pennies, then I give them. They buy a toy, which obviously costs yeah. more than a hundred pennies. But you get but the toys. But they give like me a toy all closet. their pennies, and I bring them a toy. Wait, I think that is a genius plan. My kids don't really respond that well to that. No. But I haven't tried it. That's a really good structure. You have to try it. You have to be consistent about it. Carmen gets it differently than Rafa gets it differently than Leo gets it. But you just just stay consistent about it. Sometimes they run away and I'm like, we are doing patches right now. And I'll be like, we're taking away all the patches. Do you do patches every single night? Every single night. So we do it every single night. That's why I haven't gotten it. And they can give each other patches during the day. So like Carmen can be like, wow. Rafa said thank you. Well, when I love I gave how that this. brings like mm-hmm. builds. so they're rewarded for being nice to each other. Now, it, a lot of times, like you know, completely honest, a lot of times I will forget to do the patches during the day. So I take a random handful of patches and I give it to them. And then I'm like, I saw that you did this. Yeah. I saw also that this one hit that one. So we're going to take a patch away. Yeah. So then, and then for, I make like up some reason why they get like that many patches and then we do the pennies. But they are so excited that they put their little... Do you like, because, I'm sorry, like I'm, I'm no, it's uh, great. asking you, this is, but whatever. Do you do, you're so into like yoga and meditation. Do you do any of that with your kids? So then... We have dance party, and they each get to pick a song. Mm-hmm. And I put it on my phone. Leo is really my two year old is really into the Ghostbusters song right oh now, gosh, which is, that's is magical. It's like twelve minutes of dancing. Right. Also, well, that I know. Yeah, yeah and they and they get tired. <laughs> okay, thank you for saying <laughs> what I'm thinking. Yes. And then they get tired. Carmen likes the middle or that like Fifty oh, Shades of Grey song. Love the middle. Or the, my the, kids the, like Material Girl. Yes, and, 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 and like that's every one of favorite. Really I have I have a whole playlist. But don't you think that's because you're playing it? You're like, let's create their movie. No, I have never yeah. once played Tiny Dancer of my own volition. <laughs> oh, in my I home. love Tiny no, Dancer. No, it's a great song. We have Mehente, we have Enrique Iglesias, we have huh. Material they have Girl, and own, we have Elton John. Their Jones. own taste. That's really, I like that. And, Billy, and and um, oh my gosh, Bruce Springsteen. What is Dancing in the Dark is my I, son's like. But favorite I love song. Dancing in the Dark. The greatest. It's the obviously. The, I'm a Jersey girl. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen is you know next to next to holiness. Yes. So it's you know fine. Um, but no, I think you know what I love about this though. Is they sent something home in Philo's school the la- last week, which was like it was like a be nice badge type of thing, where you encourage the kids to call out with each other, like, "Oh, John did this yeah. really mm-hmm. nice thing for me," and that I think is what is really fun about what you play with here is like they get it's a team thing. It's mm-hmm. not like oh, totally. I won today, and it's also again not competing with each other. Right. It's like ma- making them lift and they each other try up. to. Carmen's like, "I got more patch." I'm like, "No, you didn't. Yeah. It's all for everybody. We all have to mm. figure out a way to get along together." So then we do dance party, yeah, and then we do yoga, and I'm. Make it so ridiculous. I turn on that Enya song, and oh, all I love and that all. Enya. The, I know and, exactly. when you yes, say that, you know the, song. The, uh, the yoga Enya song, <laughs> and then <laughs> yes, only time. <laughs> and then and then I make them do some random poses. And a lot of times, I'm I mean I'm a yoga teacher. I'm just making stuff yeah. up. They respond well to animals. I'm like you know the monkey lion. pose, yes, <laughs> parrot pose, whatever. And they get really excited. Then that makes them calm down. Then they go and they read books with Alec, mm-hmm. and then it's bedtime. And, and is that like at twelve o'clock at night? Yeah. Yeah. 7 p.m. 
So you start, you start early. early. I start early. Between seven and then Carmen can sometimes stay, stay up, up till seven. eight yeah. or eight or eight. And we'll like we'll read books. We're reading Ramona the Pest. Yeah, fun. Um all all of that. You know, same thing that you're yeah, doing. Yeah. And and just be able to sit down and she doesn't have like a, a million tiny but it little is boys. Starting like, early. It's like having that time mm-hmm. making that time. I just get I get so excited when they're sleeping too. I know. Like I too. love them very much. And when they're <laughs> sleeping, because, I'm like, yes, you know why? Because we time. not only for ourselves, but also like I've read the studies. I mean I've done stories. Oh, they on, need it how important sleep is for all of us but particularly for growing brains so like when sometimes when they're not sleeping I'm like it is 8 22 and your brain is not growing you know it's like I feel panicked <laughs> I, I'm totally with you I, so I feel you. totally panicked about the like science of it which is so silly but because uh, I'm sure they're going to be fine but I wish I, yes, there yes is... they will be fine <laughs> <laughs> I like that because I do think i when my children have melts, which is not often, but but when they do, um, particularly one of them, it's w- was it can be intense, mm-hmm. yeah. and I don't know how um, to handle it because they it's don't not have meltdowns very often. No, they're not them all the time. That's not they go their to sleep by seven. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> not their natural state. Like, yeah. and she has them like this weekend when we were like, staying up late and mm-hmm. eating whatever we want. It's mm-hmm. worse, right? Yeah, and um. And I don't know, like, how you – I feel like somebody that teaches yoga or, like, is so calm would be better. No, I'm a, I'm a drill sergeant. I'm very strict with them. And I am the disciplinarian. So what happens when the melt happens in your so, house? So, I mean, I'm trying different things. So my thing is that I have two boys that are very close in age. So, well, actually, all three boys are very close in age. <laughs> but, but Ruff and Lee are 14 and a half months yeah, apart. And it's moly. a lot. And they're very uh, aggressive yeah. physically sometimes. Um, and I'm, like, super namaste. Like, we do not hurt flies. Yeah. We are, like, very – we're very – and so I've gone back to timeouts. Yeah. Um, and and not it's nothing crazy. No. It's like ten seconds, yeah. maybe thirty seconds. Leo, my my two year old, so my third child, is going through something where he gives himself timeouts, which is like makes your blood oh boil gosh. and laugh. Because he's at like the same he doesn't even care. Because he'll go and he'll hit somebody. He'll be like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go take timeout, and he runs over to the chair that I put them in the timeout, and he's like, Okay, sorry. It's like yeah, and then he goes and he does it again. <laughs> I go take timeout. He literally took like 15 timeouts in a row today, and he just was like giggling and laughing, and I'm like, he's not getting it. Yeah. But what I realized because my other two children did the same thing that you just continue to do it. Yeah. And then eventually they get it. And now if I give Carmen or Rafa a timeout, which I rarely have to do, especially with Carmen, she's yeah. never, never, never. Um, she's so embarrassed. Yeah. And then that's it. She won't do it again. Um, but and like, Leo you know when it's that. like a crazy melt, which is like more about the emotional state mm-hmm. than like a behavior? A lot mm-hmm. of times they just need love and a big yeah. hug. My yeah. my ground rule is you don't hurt anyone. Yeah. You never yeah, hurt see, anyone. Yeah, see girls, like they're not, they're not, not as, their thing. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, Sometimes my, Carmen, I, I mean, gets influenced well, sometimes by the, well, by the boys. Yeah, the my, it is self-defense. I mean, that, it's more like crazy melt, like, you know. And, and just and emotional. Freak out. Emotional. Yeah. And so don't want to say don't stop crying. So with Carmen, it, a lot of it, with that kind of energy, a lot of it is she has to stay honest. Because she'll just get like, you don't love me and yeah. you don't like me and you don't want to be my friend. And I'm like, that none of that is true. You're saying to me that you don't like me right now, mommy. And I'm like, that no, 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 no. That's not true. Yeah. So I'll make her repeat what I said. Yeah. I'm saying I love you and you can't. Yeah, run around do whatever with scissors you're doing. because that's not yeah, safe. Yeah. I'm sorry that you're upset with that, but that is the ground rule. And eventually they come around to it, but you got to stick your ground yeah. to what's true, what's kind, what's necessary. And what's consistent. It yes. sounds like what you, mm-hmm. I like, like, I need. She, something, I, but I agree with you because in the very beginning, especially when we were, when Hilari and I were first starting to become friends and I would be there with, and we'd have all of our kids together and it does get, with seven children around, it's it gets really, yeah. really nuts. But um, something that I always marveled at was her ability to keep this sort of equanimity calm. Yeah. In this storm, because I have I have kind of a temper, and obviously I keep it away from my kids. Yeah, but like, but my, in my life. husband, yeah. <laughs> like, but like, yeah, but you know, I like I get frazzled or frustrated, and my response is like, listen, or you know, whatever. Yeah. And um, not only do they not respond, you look totally, I look totally absurd, and they're sort of like, oh, you're you're yeah. a joke, like yeah. I'm not going to listen to you. But I also something hilarious to me, which I really struck a chord and has helped me a lot. Was um, picture picture the situation tomorrow, yeah. and how would you have told yourself to handle it tomorrow? Because in the moment you're like, why Frustrated. won't you understand? Yeah. Stop screaming! Stop hitting your brother! Stop torturing him! Because like the five to three thing, filming this four, she'll be five at the end of the month. But like her, she and her brother will fight over the silliest yeah. things, mm-hmm. and I will. You know, I'll expect from her to be a grown up because there's so many things about her that are precocious and she gets it. And I'm like, oh, you're my little buddy. And then I remember that if I didn't have younger kids, I'd still think of her like a baby. 
definitely. Yeah. So I try to, I remember that always, Larry, that, that idea of like, how would I respond? How would I ask myself to respond to this if I were looking at so it tomorrow? So it just allows you to take a breath, yes. basically, is what that does. Well, you yes. know the saying, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm-hmm. It's essentially that I'm so depleted in some ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I kid, kid me not, I'm tired. Yeah. I get frustrated. Yeah. I'm so depleted in so many ways. And I don't have the energy to not get it right a lot of the time. Not all the time. I lost my temper the other day. I still will lose my temper. Yeah. But uh, most of the time, I really am trying to get it more or less right. Yeah, because you know and the because long Because I know game. later game. on, I don't want to have to like come back. I mean, the other day, Carmen is so into these shoes. And I and it was it's not... Appropriate, appropriate weather yeah. for these shoes. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I am very frustrated. Right. And she's telling me that Ugg boots are uncomfortable. And I'm like, says no one yeah, ever. Seriously. No one ever said Ugg boots <laughs> they are. They might have said and, they were unattractive. Right, exactly. <laughs> completely agree with you there. And I'm trying to make her, and she's being really, really, really difficult and crying about it. And, I, and then I feel for her because I remember when I would have to wear things yeah. that I wanted when I was younger and I don't want to like, but at the same time, I need to protect her little feet. Yeah. And so I made her, I made her put her, them on and I'm getting frustrated with her. And she's like, mommy, why are you yelling at me? And I'm not actually yelling, no. but like more than my normal calm voice with them. And I was like, I'm so sorry. You are so right. Yeah. And I had to I had to own it. But that teach like even that moment is teaching of apologizing for them. Yeah. teaches them how to apologize, yes. which is an important yes. thing to learn. Yes. We had Adam Grant on the podcast months ago and he said exactly that. He's like, when you struggle as a parent, mm-hmm. talk to your kids about yes. it because they learn so much yes. more from that and ask their advice. Like if you're you know, stressed he, for him, he was like stressed about giving a talk the next day. And he said, you know, what would you do to deal with stress? Or if you got embarrassed, how would you deal yeah, with that? It's so important. Um, they love you know, they love to be thought of as their, that their opinion counts. Their yeah. opinion matters. And it, by the way, they probably do have great ideas. So what do you what do you and your husband do to like relax? You have two little girls. You have two busy jobs. Mm-hmm. You have full lives. Like, what do you do to just kick back and relax and have fun and reconnect so that your marriage is the foundation of the family? We, first of all, do that. I mean, like, it's important because we like to be around friends. Um, so we could, like, go to dinner with friends every, not every night because we're too mm-hmm. tired. But if that was, like, <laughs> our, you know, our weekend plan, we could a lot of times make it with other people. That's like kind of, I'm social. I We're want, the same way. Right? Oh my God, can we have dinner sometime? Yes, mm-hmm. let's do it, all <laughs> six of us. Let's do it. That but awesome. I will say it's important to like realize, wait, when was the last time just the two of us went to dinner or like even hung out where it's not like just watching a new show? I mean, right. I, like that's, we like Netflix. We like know? Netflix. <laughs> we like Hulu, we like Netflix. Yeah, but it's important to like be like, okay, hold on. If something's coming up let's go away for the weekend like that's a good way to reconnect Mm -hmm. you know to really Mm -hmm. prioritize just the two of us and that's hard because you don't have we we travel so much i don't get to see good even great friends you know so i think it's important for us to think like okay when was the last time just the two of us did anything and even if it doesn't i hope he won't be listening but (laughs) even if it doesn't sound quite as fun as like having a big dinner party which is more appealing to me you gotta just do it it's good to it's good to connect 